Hi everyone, and welcome to a what what is a follow up chat? I think a second episode with creator, comics creator Jack Brelio. Jack, thank you for jumping in. Thank you for joining, and happy almost New Year to you. <laughs> thank you, Jason. Yeah, happy almost New Year to you as well. Yeah, well, no, thank, thank you. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You and I had a a chat over the summer, I think, and um, glad to have you back for a second talk to expand on some things to maybe uh, put a video version of this out for folks that didn't have the chance to check out the audio and. Uh, record another another audio episode with you as well okay perfect yeah great yeah. Uh, i usually start by mentioning a couple of works and then we can sort of explore the the territory that you'd like and uh the first one that comes to mind is thunder boom yep. thunder boom being uh one of yours it's really interesting and as we were saying before i hit record i'm a i'm a teacher so i always enjoy books that i can put on my shelf and uh, have some play across ages um you've also worked in some shared universe licensed content worlds um scooby-doo being one of those legion of superheroes being another one and you have a book called enchanted which is uh, another kind of carryover uh, visual work, carryover meaning lots of age groups. Um, and then finally, I think the work I wanted to mention was Flip, which uh, I just recently talked with Miguel George, um, oh. who I yeah. believe was featured in that work yeah. as well. So uh, lots to appreciate about what you do. Lots to appreciate. Did I miss any major titles, any notables there before we dive uh, in? Yeah, I, 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 you covered uh, um, a, a, a good, a good chunk of them. Uh, the, 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 the main ones. I think also uh, one of the things uh, uh, for your, for your Canadian listeners, I, I don't hasn't gotten as much play in the American market yet. Although that, that's j just changed. But um, I, 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 uh, I have a Canadian superhero as well, Dominion Jack, and uh, I've done, I've written some stories uh, around a Ottawa base. That's where I'm from. Ottawa based superhero named uh, Dominion Jack, and uh, actually, uh, years ago it was out as a, 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 a as a digital. Um, you know, a whole bunch of episodes and uh, 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 chapters that were done digitally prior to uh, a couple of um, a couple of Kickstarters that uh, were around Canadian superhero anthologies, where a bunch of us uh, created um, uh, new Canadian superheroes to kind of build the Canadian superhero universe that we wanted to see. Um, and uh, so, a couple of Kickstarters there, and then. Uh, I did some more stories later, but uh, this just this past year, um, actually, those are now uh, all of the stories, including the ones that were in the Kickstarter and the ones that were digital only, um, were uh, were published by Antarctic Press uh, through their superhero anthology, Exciting Comics. So, uh, yeah, I guess that's my other that that that's my other uh, uh, um, main piece that I've worked on in the past. I guess probably uh, five, you know, well, maybe closer to a decade now. But yeah, <laughs> when the, the years fly by. <laughs> but uh, yeah uh yeah so that's the that's the other piece i guess uh including the ones you mentioned uh, jason so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. The, there are two threads there that i really appreciate one is that um your work illustrates a lot of what comics can do from science fiction to superhero to um sort of mysteries to uh the um anthologies that you've worked on and the other is that you are a person that brings other people in uh to comics which i really appreciate through the through the anthologies that you work on yeah 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 it uh, really does and actually you know you you mentioned flip um mm -hmm. Um, so that was one that I that, that was an anthology that I curated uh, for for Marcos. Yeah, so I was the editor, but I also contributed some stories. Uh, you talked to Miguel, so I, I did a couple of stories with him in, in that mm -hmm. anthology. Um, but I also brought in some um, uh, some local authors, actually uh, short story writers and novelists who were always uh, wanting to get love comics and always wanted to get into comics and uh, kind of gave them their, uh, you know, they pitched some ideas to me. And uh, so some of their stories also made it in those two volumes of flip uh, that I did. So, yeah, no, I, it's, uh, uh, I, I love collaborating. I mean, that's, that's the beauty of comics is you, you collaborate with other creators to create hopefully something magnificent for, um, uh, for, for people to read and enjoy, uh, entertain, educate, all that, all that good stuff. 
Mm. And uh, yeah, just love bringing in uh, whether they're artists or other other writers who uh, who uh, who want to learn the craft and want to get into you know or or and also love comics and want to want to contribute like uh, like uh, like I have over the years. So yeah, good fun. Yeah, yeah. What was um, the initial draw for you into the world of comics, visual storytelling? Um, so for me, uh, I think it was my sister that got me, got me into, uh, my older sister who got me into comics. Um, I was probably a very energetic young kid uh, that needed, uh, uh, that was always running around. So I probably needed some downtime and, and, and stuff, <laughs> uh, from, uh, you know, chasing me around and stuff. And, uh, I, I remember at our first, you know, uh, house, uh, walking to the local uh, corner store that was there nearby. And uh, uh, that's, you know, introduced me to the comic uh, spinner rack. Right. And uh, I, uh, uh, you know, tried it there. And I think I was hooked from, from then on uh, either going to go into that store all the time to get my uh, regular dose of, of comics. And uh, that continued over the years until I just discovered comic stores, but uh, yeah, comics at an early age, I, I remember always people asking me, like, like I, you know, my earliest memories, I think I was like probably like five or six when I was, uh, you know, I read my first comics and they were, you know, they were probably like Richie Rich, the Harvey comics, you know, like Richie Rich comics, hot stuff, uh, those, those Harvey comics at the time, um, and Archie comics, of course, uh, those were, those, those were my, I think, uh, I think those are my initial comics before I did, you know, maybe a little older, a few years older, mm -hmm. uh, then discovered superhero comics and the universes of both Marvel and, and DC on the comics rack and, uh, uh, went from there. And yes, I mean, I, I just love the format and, you know, I, you know, I, I enjoy a good film and a good TV show uh, animation as well. Um, um, but actually, you know, if, if, you know, regarding when I was growing up, uh, you know, late seventies, early eighties, I think comics could do a whole lot more that uh, a whole lot more with a lot less budget. <laughs> you know what I mean, And uh, uh, you know, and not chintzy special effects that, um, that uh, n nothing else could do. So if, uh, you know, you, you know, you had some sort of epic superhero story that you were reading for uh, in a Marvel or DC comic. Well, at the time, you know, it couldn't, it, it wouldn't compare to a, whether it was animation, whether it was a, a TV show, or whether it was a film. I mean, yeah, there there were some great classics in in those in those uh, in those formats, but didn't you know, for me, anyways. It was always comics because you know just the uh, how how the artists translated uh story and the storytelling from the artists from the writers the two of them working together to uh create a wonderful story so it just hooked me and hooks me to this day it's it's funny when I, I talk to people about that today it's like and i know some people may think uh, I, i'm crazy but i think if you talk to most people who have grown up reading comics uh, a, a lot of them feel this way it's like if i had to choose between a, a film uh, a television show, an animated show, whatever, and, or or a comic. I, I would choose comic, mm -hmm. definitely over, yeah. over over any of them. So, um, so yeah, that that hooked me. I'm still hooked to this day, many 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 years later. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, is, is there a particular story type or a particular kind of thread that you like to share in your work, or is it sort of where the muse takes you? Um. I, I think uh, there's a part of that where it's where the, the muse takes me. Um, I like telling different types of stories. I, I think, I think a, a, a lot of my stories are usually in that fantasy realm, but I, I, I do like trying other, uh, uh, other types of stories or, or mishmashes of stories, you know, uh, fantasy, you know, <laughs> you know, uh, fantasy sci-fi or just sci-fi or fantasy, you know, crime story or, or you know I, I i like playing in a lot of different things because i i have a pretty diverse uh you know and stuff that i read that i that i that i enjoy so mm -hmm. i probably pull into a, a lot of that um i mean for me reading superhero comics all my life obviously that's at the you know that 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 that's caked into the background for me in terms of uh my comic up up, up upbringing so uh I, I will 
gravitate towards uh, fantasy and you know sometimes into that and then that fantasy stuff will will move into that you know superhero or super powered individual mm -hmm. uh, individuals types of stories um, um i think thematically for me i always seem to um i mean uh, thematically I, I mean that for me that's the first thing that always pushes my stories is what what is the theme um and if it's for if it's for younger kids it's what is the lesson uh that you know that sort of thing what is the theme of the story so uh and that always is the first thing that 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 triggers my brain in terms of figuring out a story um not to say that plot isn't important but i i i'm usually a theme character first versus before before figuring out the the, the full-fledged plot um and so thematically I, there, there's always, um, I always like to play on dichotomies, uh, I guess, mm -hmm. that, that sort of thing of reality versus fantasy. So Thunderboom, right? Reality, you know, that, that, that reality fantasy dichotomy of that story where, you know, Logan is living in the real world and he imagines being a superhero in, in his, in his fantasy world. So I, I do lots of stories like that, where there is some sort of dichotomy, dichotomy. And usually it's that kind of, it's kind of, you know, you know, real world, fantasy world, what's real, what's what, uh, what's fantastic, that that sort of thing. I, I think mm -hmm. I keep going to um, to stories in that kind of in, in that kind of realm, or you know, not 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 the same over and over again, but it kind of it kind of touches uh, on that um, because I know I, I I guess there's a uh, uh, in in storytelling there's that. That, there's that comparative uh, in 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 whether it's in the plot or uh, as the plot progresses or uh, in, uh, as the characters arc through through the story, there is that okay how does how does that how does that affect the character how does that affect the plot how does that how does that get us to a resolution of the story so I I, I think looking back on um, all the stories I've done over the years I think that's one thing that you know keeps keeps uh keeps playing back with with my work and 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 it, it drives with a lot of the things that I enjoyed you know uh growing up into this day right uh, um I think I've mentioned in the past how Thunderboom is uh you know influenced by Scott McCloud and, and Zot mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. also Calvin and Hobbes and those those are, are you know you can look at those and you can see the dichotomies of fantasy and reality in there too um and then you know even more adult stuff where you know um uh, like the uh, classic television series, The Prisoner, uh, you know, fan of The Prisoner um, and how, you know, there, there was a story that was, uh, uh, you know, you know, what's real, what's not real, what's going on, that, that sort of thing. So, you know, there, there's, uh, I look back and see what are some of my favorite things uh, that I, that I've enjoyed um, and that, you know, totally, totally influences where I go um, um, when I write a story for sure. Yeah, the, you mentioned Thunderboom, and I was going to mention, uh, I think we talked about Thunderboom on the last episode as well, but um, the the way that that story centers empowerment, the way that that story centers compassion, uh, just a, a great book to sort of add to the the classroom shelf and to, to share in that way. Um, so I appreciate all of those ideas that you bring through. Yeah, uh, I a story that... Uh, really near and dear to my heart and I just love the um, reactions I'm getting especially from uh, from educators on, on, on that side um, who like you Jason they're 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 so happy that there's a, a story like that out there and you know just warms my heart that yes we you know uh, yeah. we filled a we filled a gap there and um, you know everybody that's reading it really enjoying it getting some great feedback and yeah I just yeah I hope that continues and you know it gets uh, uh, you know it, it keeps spreading uh, the, the word keeps getting spread out there about that book and people keep enjoying it yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, curious about the you mentioned we both talked about Miguel George but curious about um, other folks that have been sort of collaborators along the way, supporters, uh, any particular creative relationships that have been especially positive? Um, for me, uh, for me, uh, when I broke in, I, I, I have a good friend who's an artist, Alex Sarah. Um, mm -hmm. um, 
I always enjoy working with him. He's a good friend of mine. So, um, you know, we're, we're, we, we get along, we're aligned in a lot of ways. And, um, I, I think also, uh, you know, we did growing up enchanted, uh, uh, together. So that was, uh, that, that was, that was pretty much our first book in the industry. Um, at the time, um, you know, it was, uh, all ages or, or kids comics were there was a push but um uh, at the time this was early uh late 90s early 2000s early 2000s by the time we 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 put the book uh the book out um uh, and it, it was good timing because there was uh, there was a need for 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 kids comics at the time um uh, you know uh uh, the the main book publishers hadn't gotten full bore yet into 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 graphic novels. Um, I think I think we were at the at the cusp of that starting uh, at that time, um, and that was that was that was our first collaboration together. And doing it with a friend, I think, uh, you know, nothing wrong with doing it with with other professionals and 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 people who eventually become friends as well. But because we were friends beforehand, I think that always has a a special place uh, uh, in my heart in terms of whenever uh, I want to work on something to uh, work on something to working with a close friend uh, is is a lot of fun because um, um, I guess there's a comfort there uh, of, you know knowing the person and, and and that sort of thing and you know knowing each other well not just personally but uh, in terms of uh, professionally so I mean you know we did a lot of good things with growing up enchanted uh, that also is what led us into getting uh, doing uh, for both of us doing work for DC Comics. Uh, um, Alex did a, a whole bunch of work for the Legion of Superheroes uh, series that you mentioned. Uh, I, I did as well. And actually, my first my first DC uh, story uh, was a Legion of Superheroes story that was drawn by Alex. And uh, I, I still, you know, every once in a while, I still look back to that story. Uh, and it's still great, still a lot of fun, still works to to, to this day. Uh, it was like a, it was a first date between uh, Triple Pit Girl and, and Bouncing Boy with uh, uh, Superboy, Superman, and then there was a cartoon version, so they called him Superman. Superman uh, in the in the uh, in the middle, uh, and Starfinger is the villain uh, uh, in the midst of it, and uh, a lot of fun. Um, you know, a, a good lesson there with you know about you know uh, you know uh, uh, relationships and stuff. And just one that, you know, because we knew each other, you know, we, we were working through the editor, of course, and editor did a great job, uh, you know, making that story as good as it can be. But I think also because we knew each other and we were close by, uh, you know, that kind of, I, I don't think we would have communicated because we were friends, we were able to, and it was also our first, our first uh, major work together, uh, you know, more widespread than Growing Up Enchanted was. Um, that, uh, you know, we were in constant contact and I think it just made the story better and made it as, as, as perfect as could be. Right. Um, and yeah, we really enjoyed, enjoyed that, uh, that, uh, collaboration. So that, that's always one. I, I think that's one that, um, um, I, I, I look back and say it would be the best one then not to say of any of the other collaborations I've worked with a lot of great artists and co-creators on, on, on stories over the years. And, and I enjoy each and every one of them because they all bring different aspects to it. Right. Um, I mean, some people you, uh, you get along really well with and others, maybe not to say that there were any conflicts because I, I don't have any, I don't have any stories where, you know, Oh, I didn't get along with this artist. Oh, this, you know, this person was terrible to work with, or that person was no, nothing like that. I mean, all were, all were positive experiences. Um, but I think, you know, with, with one where you had a, a friendship to begin with, I think it was just a little extra special and, you know, it, it allowed for, uh, maybe a different kind of collaboration, uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh, because, because we knew each other so well. So, yeah. 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 yeah I love that. And, uh, the the stories that I hear more so are those that are like oh I, well I got this in the mail and you know we we sort of never met and we worked on this but it's great to hear the kind of closeness of of how all that comes together and uh, I imagine also rewarding to be telling kind of stories in your own universe with growing up enchanted uh, as well as making an impact making a mark in um, some of the the larger shared universes as well totally and and really nice 
you know, I, I, you know, the, the, the fans have an affinity for a lot of these shared universe characters, right? So, and I was a big Legion fan, so being able to uh, contribute to the lore was was awesome. Um, and also just to hear the great feedback we got when we when we did those stories. Uh, I mean, the the, the uh, I don't remember if I told the story or not, but uh, last time. But the the the, the my, my favorite encounter at a convention um, at, after uh, we did those Legion stories was. Uh, uh, a couple who came up to us and uh, thanked us for that first issue we did together. Um, uh, uh, issue, you know, it was issue number eight. It was, and it was like I said, it was that first date between Bouncing Boy and, and Trevor Girl, and uh, the couple, uh, the couple related to that story, and they just wanted to uh, to uh, to to thank us for it. And I, I mean, that really those. You know, those, those are kind of uh, those are the kind of meetings that you love to to get. That the that the you know you you love getting obviously reviews, positive reviews. Uh, you love getting <laughs> reviews, and uh, 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 you know people saying, "Oh yeah, love your stuff, love that story, whatever." Uh, online, I mean, hey, uh, any way you get it is always always welcome. Uh, but yeah. in person, that kind of thing, and and to that level, I mean, you know, you, you know, someone who could, you know, specifically relate to the story. I wasn't writing it thinking that that would hit at at, at you know hit hit a couple at that level, and it did. So hey, I mean, just awesome. It just shows the power of story, right? And mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, what you can do um, um, uh, by you know by simply by by, by telling a good a good tale. Yeah, love that. Love yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, curious about what you're currently circling around creatively and spaces where people can go to learn more and um, kind of check out the books that we've been talking about. All right. Well, um, uh, you can go to my website, uh, jackbrilio.com. Uh, you'll see all of uh, uh, all of my works uh, with links to all the various things that I've put out. Uh, over the years and, and where to get them, get more details, that sort of thing. So there's my website. Um, uh, also on all the various social medias. Uh, if you look for my name, I think pretty uh, straightforward to find me uh, with my name uh, on, on the social media. Um, I also have a newsletter um, through Substack. Um, so that whether if you like email newsletters, uh, you know, please subscribe. I, I, I only do it monthly. It's uh, that's all I have time for um, <laughs> right now. So but I do put uh, some free comics in the back of each monthly uh, issue as well. Like, you know, I give updates and, and news and try to talk about different things. But then I include some 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 some, some material from the archives, um, some things that have uh, uh, been published or were published a long time ago, maybe, uh, or things that just never, uh, never got out there. I just like uh, showcasing some things like lots of pitches and things that got done that you know fell either fell by the wayside for whatever reason um uh i've uh, i've i've put some stories that uh, i'll i'll do that sort of stuff too uh in that newsletter so yeah it's uh so that's jackrelio.substack.com or like i said uh, you can subscribe to it um and then get it uh, get it as a as an email and yeah i won't flood you with emails uh, <laughs> I, don't do it. I don't do it often uh often enough but you now it keeps you enough to keep you updated on what i'm doing so those those two things um um uh those are the two main places uh, on top of social media where you can find me that was there another question there that uh circling uh anything you're circling around creatively okay so yeah yeah okay so what uh, was uh so what i'm uh working on currently uh or what's coming out uh uh next for me um so um, so like I mentioned Dominion Jack earlier, the, uh, exciting comics number 40 just came out, which was the last issue of, of, uh, of that run of stories, um, um, that, that, that finishes off, uh, the digital only stories that, uh, uh now, now available in print. Uh, so you can, uh, you can get that at your local comic shop. Um, they're available for back order. So from issues 36 through 40, uh, if you're interested in uh, superhero, uh, adventure, it's, it's good fun. Um, so issues 36 through 40, uh, I do plan to do more, um, uh, Dominion Jack stories, uh, uh, probably, uh, probably in exciting comics, uh, that anthology or any of the other anthologies that, uh, Antarctic will be doing, uh, around superheroes. Cause they have a, they have a, a kind of indie shared, uh, universe, um, uh, 
Uh, so, you know, they, they, they're doing a lot of different uh, superhero uh, material uh, in, in various anthologies. So, um, so yeah, I plan to, I think there is at least one other story that's coming out uh, a little later next year, a uh, short story that I did um, for Divinity and Jack that, that, that's coming. Um, as well, I've done a, 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 a written a, a, a the, there are more stories coming for Dominion Jack, and there are some team-up stories that uh, that uh, that I'm working on. One with uh, a Canadian uh, creator. I, I don't know if you remember Northgard from the mid '80s. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, it's Mark Shamblum. Uh, we've talked of uh, we we're collaborating on doing a, a team-up where Dominion Jack meets uh, Northgard. Um, and I, so, yeah, I've got a few uh, stories where I want Dominion Jack to meet some other. Uh, universe uh, uh, superhero characters. So Northgard is one of the first ones. Um, and actually, I've also been talking to Antarctic and Ben Dunn about doing uh, a, a team up with uh, uh, one of his characters as well. So so there uh, will probably be some more Dominion Jack uh, material uh, in the near future. Nothing, uh, nothing slated yet. Um, so there's that. Um, and then uh, for Marcosia, I do have a, a science fiction uh, love story, uh, I, I, I like to call it, um, called Asteroid Adrift, uh, coming out in the new year um, with uh, Marcello Bondi and Ricardo Be Be Um We're, uh, uh, and that one, um, if you're a fan uh, like me of The Prisoner or a fan of Lost, um, it's a... a uh, uh, it'll be uh, a fun story for uh, for uh, for those uh, that that like that that kind of story. Um, it's it's about a a, a, a couple who uh, get law uh, who find themselves on an on an asteroid, uh, crashed space shuttle, uh, and they're trying to figure out how they got there. They have no memory of 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 how they got there, and story goes from there. So uh, yeah, looking forward to that coming out because. So, uh, we worked on that a, a while back. It's uh, and uh, just uh, uh, actually about a, I guess was it about a month or so ago submitted it into uh, 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 Marcosia, so it's in the pipeline. Uh, we're expecting probably like uh, uh, end of winter, uh, early spring release for that one. Mm -hmm. um, um, and then other than that, I am you know uh, trying to. Uh, working on some pitches for from some a lot of my next 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 material. I, I, I do have some more um, kids uh, pitches that I'm I'm trying to find homes for. So um, you know I'm working with my current uh, editors and uh, other publishers to see who's interested in um, in uh, in doing uh, uh, you know uh, working with me on on a, on another. Uh, uh, you know, middle grade book uh, or YA book. So I've I've got some ideas out there that I'm pitching and hoping to get some good news on that. Um, one that uh, that's uh, actually uh, uh, has gotten some interest from a, a, a publisher, but uh, just it's been a, a little uh, it's gone a little slower. So hoping for good news in in the new year that that one progresses to uh, uh, to get on the schedule. So yeah, I'm hoping hoping for another one to follow to follow uh, follow up uh, Thunderboom and. Obviously, I would love to do more Thunderboom too if if that happens. Um, still no word on that, but uh, uh, I do have I I do have ideas where I could easily do a sequel uh, or, or or more stories of Thunderboom if uh, if if there if there's interest. And so we'll see we'll see if uh, uh, if if that comes to pass as well. So so yeah, that's uh, yeah you know juggling juggling a few things and <laughs> hoping uh, hoping for some. Uh, you know, so a few things coming out and also hoping for uh, a few things to, to turn up uh, in the next year. That'll uh, hopefully keep me busy in 2024. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, w wishing you good news in the, the new year and uh, all sorts of creativity on the way, it sounds like. And glad to share about the works that are already out in the world. And uh, yeah, I, I appreciate your time. Anything that we missed that you want to make sure to share before we close? Oh, I think, uh, no, I think. Covered it well. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm good. All right. All right. Well, yeah. glad to have you back anytime. Thank you for coming Thanks. for a, a second Thanks. chat and uh, glad to share about your work. All right. Thanks, Jason. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah.